Muy buenas a todos chicos, estamos aquí con Wipo, el top laner de Fanatic, que acaba de ganar a Misfits en una partida por la que nadie daba un duro por ellos, acaban de hacer una remontada bastante curiosa, la verdad. Hello Wipo, thank you very much for being here. Uh, you just won uh, in the first match of the second half of this summer split, and you had a match that was kind of crazy because uh, there was a fight in Ancient Drake that gave you the, the match, the game. So mm -hmm. how are you feeling after this match? Um, I'm really happy that we, like, we stuck together as a team and we were talking about what to do in the game and we were just trying to stay alive in the game. Um, I was also happy that even though I had a really bad early game, like, we were still, like, focused on how to win and, and like, you know, we were just having a rough time in the game and we have been in the past and I feel like um, the difference between this game that we played and the others was, like, we we're, were really trying to, like, stay, stay, keep our heads above water and I think that that's something that uh, helped us a lot this game. How can you do that, guys? Because uh, our casters were saying that Fnatic is like a team, like is a specialist on comebacks. And once again, you did it. Why is it? How is it possible that uh, you were losing by 8k gold? Mm -hmm. And no, I mean, the, the mask was for Fnatic and suddenly Fnatic appears and they strike and they win. How, how can um, you do that? What is special about you? I mean, I don't think it's like it's necessarily special. I think it's just because our players are individually very strong. Like mm -hmm. our carries and in, in Nemesis and uh, and Reckless, they're very strong carry players. So, um, in in late game team fights, the enemy team uh, sometimes gets baited into committing to killing our backline, which has happened this game. Dawson and Razork were very committed to diving our team backline, and then me and Hilly were able to peel very well and make sure that uh, Set wasn't able to disrupt our 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 position very much, and mm -hmm. then. Uh, I was able to hit some clutch ruptures and got some follow-up with Shockwave and whatnot, and it was really, really, really good. Um, I think that um, even though my early game was very bad, I think that eventually uh, my Cho'Gath pick like pulled through in the end, and okay. I got some clutch ruptures and silences, and I think that that helped uh, shape the, the team fights. And uh, I think in the end, what's important is just if we don't fall this far behind, I think we would have a much easier time winning. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe we're comeback specialists, but I think we're just good at playing the game and if we don't have to go through that struggle of coming back I think we're just going to have a much easier time winning of course so in the end I would just say that um, our backline players are very very good and the enemy team feels like they have to force very hard to kill them mm -hmm. and they feel like they have to kill them to win the game so when they overcommit and try to dive into our team comp they end up dying because they're um, too busy committing too many spells and they lose track of the team fight. Yeah uh, to, to be able to do that is because uh, you guys trust each other a lot, I guess, right? Mm. For example... I think we're just really good at playing our individual parts, like, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and the trust just comes from, like, recognizing the situation. So I actually don't think it's necessarily a trust thing. I think it's just, like, we, we're actually well aware of what's happening and we're very good at playing it. So mm -hmm. uh, even though there is trust involved, of course, um, yeah. it's also just, like, we know what's happening and we're very well aware of the team fight. I feel like we, we play team fights very well when we're playing, like, when we know how to play this the composition and i think this game that showed that mm -hmm. every single team fight that we won we were very well aware of how to fight and um how to set it up how would you say that are you guys right now i uh, i your status your level your performance because uh, with the first mm -hmm. half of the speed we have a negative result it's four five now it's yes. five five finally so it, it's going to get better i guess uh, it's typical from fanatic you know um how are you right now like what would you say um I mean, I think that it's hard to judge because our early games are pretty bad, and today I was a part of that, a huge part of that. I think that, um, in general, I've noticed that uh, I feel like um, some of the freedom and pressure I bring from top lane is what helps my teammates play much more freely and, and, and like can do their thing. And I feel like I haven't been playing lane very well. So as a result of that, I feel like I'm putting more burden on my teammates, which I would usually relieve. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, at least, I feel like I can go do a better job uh, playing individually, so I can put more pressure on the enemy team, which means that there's less burden on my teammates, and that way, early game will be easier to do. So, um, just you know, gotta try and make sure that our early games are clean, and I'm sure we'll do better. Is there any issue that you can focus or tell me uh, why uh, are you having this bad uh, early game? Um, that's very difficult to pinpoint, I think. Like, mm -hmm. uh, there's a multiple of reasons. People making mistakes in laning phase. Like, for me, example, today. Today, I made a huge mistake in my laning phase, and I ended up getting punished big time, dying twice, and that was very rough for me. So uh, that's an example of something that went wrong. Um, but yeah, I think that that's basically it. 
like just making small individual mistakes that snowball and snowball and mm -hmm. um it ends up being pretty rough and what what uh balance or summary do you do you do about the first half you had um i think what we realized is that we shouldn't be trying to play um such a slow composition like we don't like to play slow as a team, so we shouldn't force ourselves to do that. If we end up being in a situation where we have to play slow because the game is going that way, then let's play slow. But mm -hmm. uh, if we have the ability to, let's just take the freedom to like run around and do our thing. Mm -hmm. And what do you think we can expect from you guys uh, this second half? Um, I, I'm sure we'll qualify for playoffs. Like mm -hmm. whether that's top three or top six, I don't know, but I'm I'm confident that we can make playoffs. Um, again. The, the fact that like we're playing very poorly on stage, I feel like, and the fact that we're still equal 5-5 five, five, despite playing so poorly in the early game on stage, as well as sometimes later on in the game, just mm -hmm. means to me that it's very unlikely for us not to make playoffs. Like It's not impossible, and of course, you're playing a competition. I can recognize the fact that it's possible that we don't make playoffs, but I personally believe that it's on us to get our shit together, and it's not so much that we're... Like, it's not so much that it's lost on paper, you know? Like, we've got in talented individuals. We're all strong players individually. It's really just on us to make sure that we play good League of Legends rather than uh, the fact that the enemy teams are too good at League and we can't beat them. Mm -hmm. It's on us to just play a good game of League and show them what's up. I think that that's how I feel. So, um, if we get our shit together, we're going to be a good team. That's how I feel. Yeah. You, you admitted uh, that maybe you didn't have the best games or the best early games. Mm -hmm. Their level is not the best. But uh, is it also like other teams fall because they are like surprisingly good this, mm -hmm. this summer split? What do you think about the level of LEC right now? Is, is, is it actually a better than last split? Um, it's hard to say. I think that um, teams definitely improved over, over, over the split. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that, yeah. I think LEC got better as a whole, but not by as much as it looks, I think I feel like, because I think that the top end got a little bit, uh, like, slowed down a little bit. So Fnatic, G2, OG, we all, all three teams slowed down a little bit. And then uh, teams like Mad Lions and Rogue started stepping up, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Misfits. So, like, out of those six teams already, it's like the, the, the power difference in, in, in teams went from the top three being a little bit above to uh, going a little bit down, and then the... Uh, the um, the other teams are a little bit up. So like Rogue yeah. and, and, and Mad went a little bit up and we went a little bit down. So now it's the opposite. I think that's not how it went. So uh, I wouldn't say that the level as a whole mm -hmm. went up a lot. I think it's more that we went down, they went up instead of like up. Both up, up. up, up. I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah, but... <laughs> I, I understood. I, understood. Um, I, think, I think it's a bit of both. I think it's a bit of both. Mm -hmm. It always happens when a good team like you guys uh, have a bad uh, situation or, or a bad, bad result mm -hmm. uh, that people start to criticize and they start to say things like, you know, guys, uh, mm -hmm. Wipo is ending his contract this year, so, so he maybe wants to leave Fnatic. Uh, same thing with the bot lane or wherever. Or maybe Fnatic is to um, uh, take new players to, to change uh, mm -hmm. sometimes the roster. What do you think about this criticism? And what do you, how do you feel when they say this kind of stuff? Mm. Um, for me personally, I feel like people are, like they don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes. They don't really understand how we feel. They don't understand like our actual problems. They can just judge based on what's being happening on the screen, right? So for example, if I have bad LEC games, mm -hmm. um, or I play a game very poorly, like today, for example, I played early game poorly, but I had a pretty good mid to late game. Um, I was able to do my job in team fights. Let me put it that way. Um, people will still like carry on the the luggage of oh the early game was bad. Um, mm -hmm. Like he, he's a bad player because his early game was abysmal. Um, and people don't really like balance the values of a player very well because they just speak their opinion. Yeah, everyone has a different opinion, right? Like, would you rather have a top laner that's 6-0 but doesn't do anything in team fights or would you rather have a top player with 0-6 and carries the game like carries the game through team fights that's like questions like that is just like you're looking at it that way if you look at it that like that seriously i feel like a lot of fans give criticism based on such a simple question they're not taking all the like every piece of information into account they just see what's on their screen and criticize based on that so yeah. Um, it's difficult to take some of the criticism seriously because people don't even understand why that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand how come the situation was like this. 
Mm -hmm. um, and when someone makes a mistake, it's like people just assume that they're stupid or bad when in reality, there's almost always a reason behind someone doing something. And for example, for me, the reason I can explain why my early game was so bad this game. Mm -hmm. um, the viewers can't, which is why, um, in my opinion, that their feedback is something that's, that needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Because if they would understand the game at the same level as a professional player would, then um, the way feedback would be granted would just be pinpointing where the mistakes are rather than saying that someone is good or someone is bad. Yeah. Which is what usually ends up happening, right? Like, oh, Bupal sucks because he died twice at minute 10. But they can't explain why I died at minute, like twice mm -hmm. at minute 10. I can't. I understand. Have you ever <laughs> felt in need of explaining? Um, yeah, I mean, it's tempting to try and explain. And I think that's something that I can do a better job of, of like explaining like my viewers and, and people that like come watch my stream like by themselves, like explain mm -hmm. like, hey, this is why the LEC game, I didn't do so well. This was my thought process. This was what was going on in the game. And this is why I made that mistake. And it's something that I'm considering doing. So um, I'll probably like check with people and see if they like that idea or not. Um, <clears throat> it's something that I'm like, it's something that I would feel much more comfortable about doing because yeah. also the opposite of defending some other players and their thought process is something that I would like to do as a player, which is why casting to me is something that I would enjoy doing. And I would try to, as a caster, try to just remind people that, Hey, like, this is why someone did this, like made this mistake. Like it wasn't that stupid. Like the guy is still thinking he's trying his best to win. So yeah. like try to help people understand that, that, Hey, these pro players are all trying to win no matter what. And yeah, the decisions they make aren't stupid. Like they aren't designed to lose. They're designed to try to win. And sometimes they look stupid and sometimes it works out. And when they look stupid, I would like to be a caster or a player, both even, that is there to defend those decisions and like explain to people, this is what was going on in my opinion. So don't be so harsh on them. Like they're trying their best. They just misread the information or whatever is going on, right? Like I would genuinely enjoy doing that. So. Both defending myself is something that I enjoy and explaining my own thought process and why I'm doing things, as well as hopefully in the future, in my career at some point, I can help defend other professional players mm. um, and explain why things are going the way they're going for them uh, in cases and, of bad games. Yeah, and, and that's, I think that's very important uh, to have. Like, So send mm -hmm. your CV to, the, to Riot Game to be a caster, <laughs> please, because I think that's very important to have. Uh, also, we both, last split, uh, you were telling me that one of your goals was to improve, or to, well, not to improve, but to show that your uh, champion pool is bigger than the people were thinking. And you actually did. I mean, I, I think you, uh, from my interview uh, with you, you, you took uh, one different champion every game, I think. So that was super <laughs> nice to see. And we are still seeing you with different champions. Do you have any different goal this summer split for yourself? Um, my personal goal for this split is to be a very good Riven player. So, <laughs> <laughs> Riven? Um, yes, I'm trying to make Riven work, and I would really like to be a very, very good Riven player. So um, right now, my personal goal, like in terms of champion pool, would be playing Riven, and the other one would be just to up my level as a whole. But mm -hmm. I feel like that's, also, that's everyone's goal all the time, right? You always yeah. want to be just a better player, a better person, whatever. <laughs> uh, but my personal goal is like I want to be... Uh, well, that's not my only goal. The, the other personal goal I said is that I want to... Uh, be a player that is recognized um, at all times of the game. So cool. someone that uh, you're thinking and looking at this guy play the game and, and you can tell that that's me. And I think that that's something that I, I would really, really enjoy um, having in my gameplay. And it's something that I'm looking for um, by creating opportunities that no one else would see, playing the game um, optimally mm -hmm. and pushing the boundaries of the game. And that's something that's unique to me and i think that's something that right now I'm, I'm i'm struggling with and i think that that's one of the reasons why Fnatic is struggling because in the past i was very very good at um creating situations that my teammates would take advantage of earlier than expected so like i would show up bot lane playing aatrox like hey i'm lane ganking bot <laughs> yeah um all of a sudden or you know i'm playing pantheon and i'm all across the, i'm all over the place and, and i'm playing camille and showing up everywhere and i think that that's something that i'm missing right now in my gameplay and i would like to also add that back to my to my skill set I think I'm lacking that. Well, looking forward to see that. So I hope you, you accomplish as you accomplish with the, the champion pool. So Weibo, that was my last question. Is there anything you want to say Thank to you. your fans and the people who support you? Uh, I just want to appreciate you guys for all the support. Um, again, for anyone watching this interview, if you, um, if you feel like it would be cool if I reviewed the LEC game, try to explain myself perhaps, and feel free to follow me on social media and let me know. 
uh, I'm happy to to try and stream like a VOD review from my point of view, explaining what happened in the game, and uh, that could be really cool content. So uh, thank you very much for uh, having this interview. Thank you very much for being here. Y muchas gracias a todos por haber visto esta entrevista, chicos. Espero que os haya gustado. Recordad que tenéis esta y muchas más en el canal YouTube de la LVP. Hasta luego.